Okay, guys, please welcome Mike Weir to the Shaw Media Center. Uh, Mike, obviously, it's always special to be back at the RBC Canadian Open, but you've also had some success here at Glen Abbey with a pair of top five finishes. So maybe you could start off by telling us what it's like to be back at Glen Abbey for this week, and then we'll open it up for some questions. Well, you know, it's always great to be back at the, at the Canadian Open. In this venue in particular, actually, it's, uh, you know, when I started my career, I, I had a really tough time with this golf course. And, um, you know, I've had more success the last few times we've played here. And, um, you know, I have to say I was a little concerned. I played here, I think I was telling Robert, I played here 10 weeks ago or so. And I was a little concerned for the golf course, but they've done an unbelievable job getting the, getting the golf course ready. It's in tremendous shape, um, really healthy. and. Um, Around the greens is very difficult, you know, some uh, funny lies around the greens, which, you know, in an open championship, um, this is our national open, you want it to be somewhat difficult around the greens and if you miss the fairway. So I think we have some of that. And I think as the week goes on, the, some of the rough will grow a little bit. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be a good championship here. Great. And if anyone has any questions about this week for Mike, just raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. Uh, first off, this event, um, and it was talked about yesterday with Scott Simmons and uh, Stephen Ames talked about it a little bit, it always brings up the whole idea of the future of golf in Canada. Um, where, sort of, where do you stand on that? Where do you sort of see golf in this country going? And where do you feel the mantle lies? Um, there's a 25-year-old Adam Hadwin, there's Dillette. Um, how does that look in your perspective? Well, to answer the first part of your question, I think it's healthy. I think the game and the men's game is very healthy. I think there's a lot of players, obviously, um, Brad and, and David and Graham doing so well out there this year. And um, I think there's a lot of talent there amongst the younger guys that played practice round with Adam um, at the U.S. Open. I think he's got a really bright future as well. And we obviously know some of the amateurs that have just turned pro, Alvin, and some of the other guys. Um, so I think it's very bright. Now, second part, a mantle. Um, I don't know if that's fair to put that on anybody right now. Um, I, I hope I hope you don't, and uh, for their sakes, <laughs> and I uh, hope they can just learn to flourish. I think Brad, if you were here the other night um, on Monday night when we had uh, the Pro Am and Lego was hosting, we were talking about uh, things of this nature, and, and Brad Fritch said time is a big thing. I thought that was well said. That sometimes it sometimes guys it's, well, it's very rare that guys right out of college get on tour, um, but. You know, Brad is, what's he, th I think he said he's 35, first year on tour. You know, it's taking him time, and, and I play with him. He's really good. He's going to be really good, too, but some guys, different times in their career. So to put a mantle on some guy, you know, early, um, you know, we've had lots of players with great called success in the last few years, and they haven't quite done it yet, but doesn't mean to say in five years they could be in the top ten in the world. You never know. Game's so, uh, uh, there's so much depth in the game worldwide, even on the smaller tours that, um, so, I think there's a lot of talent in the country. I don't, I don't know if you want to pick one guy, though, but uh, there's definitely talent here right now. It's exciting. I mean, as a fan, too. You know, I'm a fan. I mean, I want these guys to do great. I want them to, you know, blow past my records. I'd love to see that, so. But you'd like to beat them this week as well. Yeah, I'd like to beat them. <laughs> I'd like to win the Canadian yeah. Open, too. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Um, yep. You get asked every year this about how important the Canadian Open is to you, and, and rightfully so. Uh, Graham McDowell and Ernie Els were just in here, uh, Hunter Mahan, talking about playing a national open and what it means to them. Even if it's not their own national championship, even if it's not a major championship, do you feel the same way when you're when you're playing a, a something like the, you know, a, some some other country's national open? Is that a special thing for a player? I think it is, and in particular this one, because it's, you know, outside of the. The British Open or Open Championship, it's the oldest championship and it's always been had high prestige and um, I think it's, you know, I think it's really coming back to that now. It's really, you know, getting a great international flavor. We were kind of down there for a few years, but it's coming back and I think the event's really starting to gather some momentum and get a really special feel about it now. And uh, so it's great to hear Graham and Ernie say that and I think the top players really feel that way that, you know, a Canadian Open would be really nice on the resume. Is it, is it tougher for a Canadian, oh, because I, I mean, I know this, this week there's 19 Canadians in the field. Yeah, that's and, wonderful. It, and it's different, you know, obviously at other Opens as well, like the U.S. Open, for example. Obviously, a lot more Americans are playing in it. Does mm -hmm. that put the focus more on, you know, not only you, but also that you mentioned Alvin Choi and, and the younger people coming up. Does that put more pressure on them? And is that, is that, in fact, a good thing, that, you know, because you get the home crowd behind you and kind of get the momentum going? Well, it's a... Um I think yeah, when you know there's not not as many players in the field. You mentioned U.S. Open, you know, probably more than half the field are 
our U.S. guys. But um, yeah, when there's you know 19 this year, that's got to be the most. I mean, I can't. That, that's that's wonderful to have that many guys in. But yeah, you feel it as a as a Canadian. And I remember playing on the Canadian tour, and this is pretty much the lone PGA tour event I would play. So. You know, it's a big purse, and you're used to playing for this amount of money, and all of a sudden you're playing. And if I make the cut, I, I can I can really make some headway, and um, so you're thinking about all those kind of things when you're a young man um, out here. So yeah, there's a, there's that added added feel and pressure, no question. So it can be a good thing though to get crowd behind you and get to, you get some momentum going, and you can feed off the crowd. So that can be a good thing too. Um, last year when you were at Hamilton, you came and I think you described your game as, quote, awful when you when you got here. <laughs> and, uh, and it did look like you were kind of in the midst of a transition, trying to sort things out. You'd started working with Grant Way, or, you know, lots of stuff to do. Um, can you give me a sense of where you're at now coming into this week? And, uh, um, you know, maybe some sense of what it is like to struggle like that. That's got to be, I mean, most people who play the game can relate on some level to that, maybe unfortunately, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from where you've come a year ago to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, I stand on the range. At, at a, I've said that to Grant a few times this year where I've been on the range at a particular tournament and say, well, look where I was last year at this tournament. You know, the confidence level and just the way I'm playing compared to a year ago, it's a big, big change. I feel confident when I tee it up on Thursday every week now and, um, you know, it's not quite where I want it to be, but, um, you know, I could say that about weeks that I've won, you know, and before the week started, and, and then things can kind of come together and you can you end up winning a tournament. So, you know, that's what I'm hoping this week. I feel good about my game, um, and I think if I can get some momentum going early in the tournament and get rolling, that uh, I'll have a good chance this week. How do you, I mean, what are you working with uh, on with Grant at the moment? Like, is there key particular aspects of the game you continue to sort of pick away at? I think just my yeah my tendencies just my tendencies and I think they're they're the same that I was started with you know they're just less of that now and uh, but there's still tendencies that I have and uh, the way I move and the way I move the club that I'm just trying to sort I wouldn't even say sort through just get get hold of and just be more efficient with and um, you know look these guys these guys hit a long way now for me to to compete I have to be you know kind of more down the middle and, and get it on the green and let my short game do the work that's always been my game and um, you know I'm not I, I'm not trying to find more distance I'm not trying to find anything more like that that's not that's not part of what I'm working with Grant for it's just to get a little more efficiency finally given your position you're in a, you have a handful of tournaments left before you get would or would not get into the playoffs. Right. Do you feel more pressure given the new structure to sort of <clears throat> to play as much as you can and to try to get those last few events and to try to turn a year round at this point? Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely, no question. It's been it's an odd year because it's you know the fall series is now counts for next year and using one of my exemptions and I missed a month with a rib injury and it feels like the season's been really short and I've been playing catch up the last couple of months to try to play a lot so. My body's definitely feeling it. I've been practicing a lot and playing a lot the last little bit, and I still have you know one more week to go next week, and then uh, um, and then we'll see if the, these two weeks go well. Maybe I get in the PGA. So you know it's kind of it definitely crammed in yeah. with uh, with the schedule, but at the same time I, I don't feel that much pressure because you know if I had to I can use one of my all time you know that other exemption next year and and uh, have a good full year and hopefully be uh, not have any setbacks and. It'll be year two with Grant, and um, I think I'll, you know, be good next year. Lauren? Everybody knows how hard you work, Mike. I'm just wondering what one week like the U.S. Open can do for your confidence, um, or what it did for your confidence. I mean, you you got in in the end. You almost qualified, lost in the playoff, and then you, I think you had to play hard and make some birdies to make the cut at a very tough golf course, and then you played, I think, exceptionally well on Sunday, one of the lowest rounds. But mm -hmm. in a national championship like that on such a difficult golf course, when you're working so hard to recover your form, what did that do for you immediately thereafter? And assuming it did something, has it to what extent has it carried over? I would say that... Um yeah, just some validity. What I'm what I'm doing um, on a tough golf course to drive it that well to uh, put the ball in good positions um, and, and manage my game again uh, the way I the way I I normally do. Um, so yeah, I carried I definitely carried some confidence away. You know, playing around like that on Sunday was was very good for my confidence. Um, I haven't quite carried that momentum like like I thought I would the last couple of weeks. I mean, I, I played pretty well at John Deere. I was really close there um, to being really good. But uh, didn't quite get over over the hump. I didn't. I, I putted okay that week, so um, yeah, not not quite 
what I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do after that. I mean, scoring the ball is obviously very important at your level. Mm -hmm. You want to post the scores, but at the same time, haven't you always been the sort of guy who looks at what you're doing with the golf ball to really define yeah. what you're doing as opposed to fooling yourself because you had 23 putts one day? Right. That's that's true. That's true. I mean, I do have I have much more confidence in my ball striking, and and I'm able to spend more time on my my short game now. I've spent so much time on my long game that. Uh, that, that feels pretty good for the most part now. And it's just, you know, like you said, the scoring aspect. And I'm not fooling myself. You know, I go out there and, and a, a test is like the U.S. Open there that um, you can't you can't fool yourself around that, a place like that. Okay. Sean? Mike, you, talk, uh, you talked about confidence. Um, you had a merry band of about a dozen people following you today, including somebody wearing a Red Wings jersey just to make sure you'd, you, you know, you'd, you'd notice him. Uh, through all the valleys that you've been through in your career, do you derive anything like that from the support that you have? You know, not just from, you know, those merry band of followers, but, you know, from, from Canadian fans in general who still follow you even though you've gone through a rough patch in your career. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's great to have uh, support like that. And uh, um, I think I think maybe their uh, their memories are a little better than, than some other people. They, they have a longer memory and know what I've done and, uh, and know that... Um, how hard I've worked and, and they follow what I'm doing and, and it's great to have that kind of support and you know this especially being close to home um, it's great to have it so what does it mean for you then I mean you've got a chance to meet with them afterwards I mean sort of that interaction is that a reminder of that you know people no matter what happens still do seem to believe in you yeah it's a reminder and and it's a, an appreciation thing you know for me to uh, you know take the time with them you know they've uh, people like that are very supportive and um, um, yeah, it's 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 a humbling humbling thing to uh, to have that, you know, no question. It's good to have people behind you. I'll say that. Okay, <coughs> Mike, we saw what your Masters victory did and, and the excitement it generated in our country. We've seen what a gold medal has meant in in hockey a couple of times. What do you think it would mean for a Canadian to win this tournament? We saw what it was like when when you were contending, but it's been so long, and we've got so many Canadians in the field, and we have so many Canadians who can contend. What do you think it would mean to our country and would mean to Golf in general, uh, because we know that golf has struggled in recent years with people playing one out. What do you think it would mean? Do you think we'd ever get up to the you know excitement level of a gold medal? And and can, are we are we getting to that point? I don't know. I think it'd be. I mean, it'd mean a lot to the individual who who wins it. Um, I think golf's healthy in this country. I think you know people enjoy playing, love playing. We have a, a lot of talent. Like I said, I mean, um, would it would it grow the game anymore? I don't know. I don't know if it would. Um, I'm not sure of the, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. Uh, that's, it's hard to say, you know. I mean, I'm not a good predictor of those things. So, um, but I think it'd be very big for the individual who did that and, and maybe the confidence of, you know, maybe maybe some of the younger guys maybe falling in behind. And, you know, if it happened to somebody that, um, you know, could maybe inspire somebody to, to do some greater things. Do a lot of you guys talk about it? Have you talked about it over the years? No, I've never talked about it with anybody, really. We don't, yeah. yeah. Jason? Mike, uh, so far so good with the weather here at the Abbey this week, which hasn't been the case for a number of years, not since 2004, in fact. Uh, Is that right? When you were in the playoff. Um, just what's the key to playing this golf course if it stays firm and fast like it is now? Well, I think, you know, the rough is actually, you know, it, it doesn't look deep out there, but um, you know, the ball's sitting down enough that, you know, it's going to cause some problems. So I think getting in the fairway is really important, and uh, the greens are firming up and getting a little faster. So... I think key is just being in the fairway. You know, you can tack some of the pins from the fairways. They're going to still, still receive a shot from the fairway, but out of the rough, it'll be a little more difficult. So I do think you, that's the, the key, Jason. Would you prefer the golf course played tough than if it was if there was a lot of rain and the green softened up? Is that better yeah. for your game, or is, is it better for the tournament if the course shows its teeth a little bit? I think all the way around. I think it's better for the tournament. I think it's better for... Uh, you know, maybe someone who's really on top of their game to separate themselves because they're going to be able to control the ball and they have you have to shape the ball you, because the ball, you know, it's not stopping if you're if you don't hit the right line. Compared to if it's wet, it's just going to plug and um, and you're not going to just see a shootout. You'll see a real championship that might be in the single digits if it if it stays firm. So I think for our national championship, that'd be that'd be great. Okay. Any other questions for Mike? Yes, Bob. What's, what's your relationship with this golf course now? Do you is this a golf course that you like to play, or is it a golf course you've just kind of learned to play? I, I kind of like to play it now. I do. I, I, I enjoy it, and like I said, in particular, I think this year it's just in great condition, and um, uh, I, I really do kind of enjoy it now. So I think I've played it enough now that I've 
kind of figured out the lines and how I'm going to play each hole and I feel pretty comfortable on the holes now or for whatever reason I didn't before and um, so yeah I like playing it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Mike? Absolutely. Yes, Robert. There's been talk in 2017 that of course you designed in uh, Montreal with Ian uh, Andrew could host a Canadian Open. Um, what would it mean, you've, you've obviously played, you've nearly won, you played here for you know, two decades essentially. What would it mean to have a golf course you designed host the tournament? Well that would be, uh, that'd be really cool. I hope, I hope it happens. Um, I'm proud of uh, the golf course. We, uh, we had a grand opening in May there and uh, it came through the winter nicely and a lot of the changes we made are uh, kind of came to fruition how I envisioned them happening and uh, especially around the greens and the green complexes so um, you know to see it play kind of like how Glen Abbey is playing right now firm and fast that's how I envision Laval playing for a Canadian Open it'd be pretty cool to to see how the, see how the course would play so yeah it'd be great I, I would love to love to see it happen okay everyone thanks for your time and thanks Mike uh, appreciate your time and thanks. good luck this week thank you